This is Twit. Now, okay, so I don't know what to make of this story. Um, there's a guy named Chris Roberts uh, with who is a regard as a white hat uh, hacker with a company One World Labs. I think he's in Denver, if I, if I remember from one of the stories I read, because there's a lot that's been written about this guy. Um, a few days, about four days before this most recent RSA conference that we, we've been talking about, because a lot of news came out of it, he was on a flight, uh, which I think ended in New York. And while on the flight, he tweets, find myself on a 737 slash 800. Let's see, box hyphen IFE dash ICE dash satcom. Shall we start playing with ICAS? That's E-I-C-A-S messages. And the ICAS is engine indicating and crew alerting system. And then he tweets, pass oxygen on anyone and a smiley face. Well, that sounds like gobbledygook to anyone who isn't deep into the acronym soup, which is, you know, anything deep like this. Um, but the FBI didn't find it funny and they were waiting for him when the plane landed. Um, As they should be. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's like saying, gee, my bomb didn't go off. You know, yeah, I mean, uh, I like you know, or, or my underwear got hot. Uh, they didn't arrest him, so, though, so uh, They didn't. They held him for four hours. They yeah. questioned him. They did strip him of all electronics. Um, so, he, he, as he said, he walked away bare of electronics. Rightly so. Um, so, most people believe that the tweet was a joke, though few were laughing. Subsequently, um, and I don't, I, I wasn't clear whether it was during this four hours or afterwards, because then there was an there was an affidavit that was filed by a special agent of the FBI, who cited many of the things that Chris Roberts is alleged to have told them, and I'm sure they had a tape recorder running. So, for example. Uh, and this affidavit is what surfaced a couple days ago. I think it was Friday that generated a big hubbub because of what this guy was alleging. He, I mean, what he himself was telling the FBI special agent that he had done. He said, quote, connected to other systems on the airplane network after he exploited slash gained access to or hacked the in-flight entertainment, that's IFE acronym, and by the way, that was one of the acronyms, box hyphen IFE, in-flight entertainment system. He stated, oh, it's hard for me to even read this. He stated that he then overwrote code on the airplane's thrust management computer while aboard a flight. He stated that he successfully commanded the system he had accessed to issue the climb command, it's CLB. He stated that he thereby caused one of the airplane engines to climb, resulting in a lateral or sideways movement Oy. of the plane during one of these flights. He also stated that he used Vortex software after compromising slash exploiting or hacking the airplane's networks. He used the software to monitor traffic from the cockpit system. And in other reporting that I read about this, he said that that there's like a there's like a box electronics at every uh, passenger's seat, and that he he worked the lid back and forth and wiggled it off and then plugged a cat 6 cable with a modified connector because it doesn't use they're not using the RJ style connector plugged it in and then with la a laptop with some sp uh, special interface and software proceeded to hack into the in use the get into the in flight entertainment system which was what was there you know route running through his his chair maybe to control channels and volume and things um, and then cracked through the firewall and got into the deeper uh, 
avionics electronics. Now, okay, now, <coughs> either way you look at this, and no offense, Chris, but this guy is a moron. You, you first of all, either he did it, which is, is Looney Tunes, or he didn't, but he's saying he did. Which, which is Looney is, Tunes. Is Looney Tunes. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, and and I also, uh, there there is some uh, footage of him at, oh, and what happened was, four days later, he tried to go to the RSA conference mm. on United. On a plane. Which is the same. Yes, and was blocked. He got through the TSA security, really? got to the gate, and then some United officials came up and said, we're sorry, we have the right to refuse service to anyone, and, and you are who, refused. Who claims to hack our jets? We're going to yeah, turn so you he, down. Yeah, so he took Southwest I'm instead. I'm surprised he's and, not on a no-fly list. I, I, I'm just amazed by this. So uh, a warrant has been issued for them to get access to his stuff. They've got like, he had like eight hard drives and uh, some Macs and a few other things that he was uh, traveling with on that flight. He sounds but, frankly I mean, a little delusional. Um, well, uh, and for, yes, you and could I'll, quickly verify this because wouldn't the folks on the flight deck, wouldn't the pilot notice if, yeah, uh, it's if like, something happened John, like that? we seem to be drifting why, to the left. Why are we <laughs> slewing left? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, so the, I think uh, you could quickly verify this. I would guess almost certainly the guy's delusional. Probably wants attention. Well, and uh, as I was going to say, in the foot, there's some footage online, and and I've seen the transcript of it. And he's got, I mean, he's old enough that you would think he would have outgrown that sort of style that ha some that some hackers have of you know like impressing their mothers. You know, I mean, where they say things that someone who doesn't know technology wouldn't be impressed by like well i got partial partially penetrated the firewall it's like wait partially penetrated the firewall okay what does that mean and you know and then i slid to the side and got in touch with the other firewall and i mean anyway i'm giving a bad example but it if you read it it just it doesn't read credible it doesn't read like somebody who who understood what it was he did even if he did do something, it wasn't like he's able to articulate it in a way that, that sounds like he knows what he was doing. So I don't know what to make of it. As you say, Leo, you would think that he would have left a trail of, of, of evidence if something of that magnitude was done. But also, who is going to – first of all, do, I, I have a hard time believing he overwrote code – on the airplane's thrust management computer. Seems I mean, like that you would need certain permissions to do. To do it from the flight entertainment system seems odd. However, I I will say I believe this notion because, uh, because there are many security experts know that you can hack into the plane from the entertainment system. Well, that's terrible. They, that's like the cars not, with the cheap CAN bus that we've been talking did about. Not Yes, they did not do this right. They they engineered it with hubris, believing that they could put a firewall of some sort between the two, but for weight or economy or convenience or shared topology, who knows what. But but it it, it seemed it it does appear to be very credible that from from the passenger cabin you can access flight avionics. And I feel there's no excuse for that. That's well, just no. That's, that's just, serious problem. And in fact, Win is a uh, Schwartzow. Schwartzow. I can't quite remember the name. Uh, he he's, he was like one of the top 25 uh, named top security researchers. I just saw uh, before the podcast. I was re uh, reading up a little bit more on this. He is suggesting that all in-flight entertainment systems be disabled until a thorough investigation can be made because, I mean, real researchers know that planes have problems. And, you know, and so this guy may not be the real deal. It's just very difficult from what we know to judge. But, but it absolutely appears to be the case that these systems are not secure. And then in, in, in a, some sort of a PR stunt, I guess, United has started offering mileage 
uh, whatever, what are they called? Miles. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 25,000, 50,000, or 100,000, maybe as much as a million, I think I read, depending upon the severity of what is found for hackers providing information about defects in their in-flight system. That just encourages and thinking, people to get on the plane and hack it. I'm saying, How whoa, else are you going to test it? I'm, I'm going to drive to San Francisco next time. Oh, my God. That's like, now, now, that now can't you, possibly be true. Is that true? This, yes. Oh, it's absolutely true. It's been covered. In, uh, I'm sure if you if you go to, if, if you Google are the news right now. Are they offering their code to somebody to analyze? Or are they saying, oh, just hop on a plane and let us know? I think that's the latter. That can't possibly. That's insane. I, I know, but Google United uh, mileage hacking, and I'll bet it's you'll like pull a bug up stories. Bounty, but but uh, uh, all, yes, for which a, makes sense for a plane. On, on Facebook, but on a plane. I know. I, I know. I, I don't both, understand this at both all. Both Boeing and Airbus say that the uh, have said, and many times that the. Uh, in-flight systems are not reachable from the entertainment systems, but they don't. Exp that doesn't mean they may say, "Oh, we, we've we've." That we've, could mean firewall. We have a firewall, right? That that might mean your mother can't right, get it, right. but it doesn't mean that you know somebody who really knows what they're doing can't. Um, no, no, wait a minute. It, I think the United's clarified this now, according to Sophos. They're saying hack our site, not oh. our planes. <laughs> Hack our site. Thank okay, God. Here. Hack okay, our, they're good. saying, hack our site for free miles, but don't mess with the onboard systems, please. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Wow. Says, Bugs uh, that are not eligible for submission, onboard Wi-Fi entertainment systems or avionics. Yeah, if you do that, I'm sure you're not going to get free miles. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you'll lucky to land yeah, well that's what's really crazy about this it's almost a suicidal thing to do i i, I just it's you know not to mention there's endangering nothing, everybody else there's nothing you want more than like nobody who who is in the passenger compartment with you to be messing around with no. their flight entertainment and did system. no one notice him pry the lid off the box and plug an ethernet cable into the entertainment system maybe what would be nice what would be nice would be to know if this is credible, and I I don't, you know, I've never poked around my seats to <laughs> to check it out. Although apparently you have to have a video display in front of you, and uh, <laughs> I do little short flights. Well, so, I've seen those know. boxes. I they, They're not, well, the ones I've seen are not in every row. They're, but they are spread throughout the cabin. They're humps. Nodes. Yeah, nodes. And they're nodes. Yeah. And uh, I've seen that before. I've even seen uh, flight attendants open them up and go in them when they're having trouble. But oh. um, you, if a passenger did that, don't you think that would raise... And a lot eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Wow. I feel like he's just. Uh, he, we know these guys. There's 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 guys who want this kind of attention. Well, and but but the fact that he was speaking at RSA then surprised me too yeah. because you know that's you'd think they would do some vetting of people. Well, but, maybe he's a legitimate, uh, you know, expert, but also likes yeah. attention. Yeah.